The Lord be with you. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. There's an old story. You may have heard it before, but it's one of my favorites, so I'm going to use it today anyway. Uh, it turns out that in a galaxy far, far away and long, long ago, a lion cub, newborn, got separated from the rest of the pride. How and why is it important? What is important is that this new, just couple of days old lion cub was taken in by a herd of sheep. Sheep and lions are often found for obvious reasons close together. Uh, but in this case, the pride had wandered off. The cub is taken in by the sheep and they teach the cub to do everything that it's supposed to do. They teach it how to drink water out of the river like a sheep. They teach it how to eat grass, it tastes horrible, but everybody else was doing it, so may as well. They teach the lion cub to go ah, like the rest of the sheep. Sounded bad in his throat, but it always helps to know a second language, right? Things went on for a while and all was well, all were well, and the sheep and the lion cub got along until the not too distant future from that time, there was a sound, an air-splitting, heaven-rending roar. The sheep knew it, and they all ran away just as fast as their stubby little sheep legs would let them. The lion cub started to run away, but then decided, I might want to stay here. That, that, for some reason, sounds not bad. But as this huge shadow got closer and closer to it, the little lion cub was overcome with fear and he put his face down in the grass and started eating the grass as quickly as he could. And he was aware then of this giant shadow right beside him and he heard a voice. And if you want to make it be James Earl Jones's voice out of The Lion King, that's fine, go right ahead. The voice said, what exactly do you think you're doing? And the lion cub said, I'm eating grass. And the adult lion, because yes, that's what it was, said, that's obvious. The question is, why are you eating grass? Well, said the cub, I'm a sheep, and that's what sheep do. We eat grass. And the adult lion laughed and said, no, I don't think so. Snatched the cub up by the scruff of its neck and its jaws, took the lion cub over, plopped it into the small amount of river there by the bank and said, look at your reflection, look at my reflection and tell me what you see. And the lion cub opened its eyes and looked and looked at its reflection, looked at the reflection of the adult lion and said, I, I, I'm just like you. And the adult lion said, yes, exactly. And now that you know what your real identity is, let's go show the world what that means. In water, in the water of reflection, in the water of baptism, in the water of Jesus' baptism, in the water of our baptism, we see our true identity. We discover what it means to be a particular people, a different people of people who are set apart. We discover what it means to be brothers and sisters of one another and of Jesus Christ. We discover what it looks like to be a child of God. We are sons and daughters of the God of all creation. We are God's beloved ones in whom God is well pleased. For this to become real though, for us, to enter into this relationship with God through Jesus Christ, Jesus has to come as one of us. Jesus has to come fully human in our life to redeem each and every aspect of who we are and what we go through. You can pause if you want to and say, well, he seems to get a lot older a lot faster than the rest of us. 13 days ago, he was a newborn infant. Now he's a 30-year-old carpenter. Yeah, children grow up fast. But 
you would think we could put a halt on this suffering. But at the age when it is appropriate, Jesus comes forward. He comes to be baptized. He has to be baptized. One of the hymns we don't sing enough says, When Jesus came to Jordan to be baptized by John, he did not come for pardon, but as the sinless one. He came to share repentance with all who mourn their sins, to speak the vital sentence with which good news begins. Jesus comes to enter our lives, to receive our baptism, not because he needs it, but because we do it because we need to be joined with God through the life and the ministry of God's firstborn son, Jesus, our elder brother. Jesus has to be baptized. This is one of three possible conversion events Jesus goes through. Here he leaves whatever private ministry he's been involved with, and now he moves fully into his public ministry for our benefit. Later he will encounter a Gentile woman who begs him to rescue her daughter he does and he opens the grace of god out of the house of israel to all the world just as god spoke through the prophets and promised and when peter confesses him as the christ then jesus begins his unyielding move towards jerusalem teaching each of us the cost of living the way of the cross but here at the beginning jesus is one of us ready to be baptized and when he is and when we are baptized into his life then we are born again born anew born from above all the different ways that we understand the translations but everything is new everything is changed and we are new creations in the grace of God Jesus baptism Mark 1.15, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has drawn near. Now we have the opportunity and the privilege of living all of the ways that Jesus lived in all the ways the Gospels talk about. Now with Jesus, we live the way John talks about at the beginning. We are part of the eternal creating word of God. With Luke's beginning, we, with Jesus, will stand alongside all of those people who the world considers to be on the margins, on the outside, and we will lift them up, even when them means us. With Matthew, we will be the light to all of the world, taking the grace of God from the birth of Christ through his baptism, through his entire life, and with Mark, we will begin all that now, because now is the time when the world needs repentance, new life, and new beginnings. We won't accomplish all that at once naturally, but we'll work to see it done as best we can. We will take whatever steps we can to embrace the new life that God gives us in Christ, and we will do each thing that is possible for us as it comes our way. It's easy at times to think the world is just entirely too broken for any of us to do anything that matters. But three quick notes from the end of 2017. Cat Creech is a wedding planner in Houston. Cat turned a postponed wedding because of Hurricane Harvey into an opportunity for hundreds of volunteers to get together to serve those people who had been displaced. Chris Long plays professional football for the NFL. At the beginning of the season, he decided that he would give the salary from the first six games to fund educational scholarships in Charlottesville, Virginia. When that rolled around, he decided that wasn't enough. So instead, he donated his entire 2017 salary to educational scholarships in Philadelphia as well as Charlottesville. Jaquil Jackson in 2017 decided to go on a mission to help homeless people in Chicago. He put together what he calls blessing bags, kits with socks, toiletries, and food for those in need. By the end of 2017, he had given out 5,000 of these blessing bags. By the way, Jaquil's only 10 years old. There are things that we can do 
baptized in Christ, brought into a new identity. That's how we do it. That's how we show the world what it means to know what our identity is. This is our identity, and that means this is our politics. This is our economy. This is our social media use. This is our relation with every person we know because we have a new identity in Christ. Because of your identity as those baptized into new life in Christ, over 1,000 men, women, and children who otherwise would have been homeless had warm, safe beds, hot meals, and new clothes provided in the cottage across the street. Because of your identity as those baptized into new life in Christ, Team Reed, the educational ministry that you began, now has 1,700 coaches in 47 schools throughout Shelby County with partners in Jackson, Selmer, Covington, and Huntsville, Alabama. Because of your identity as those baptized into new life in Christ, over 40 adults decided to become a part of this community of the beloved, as well as more than three dozen youth through confirmation last year. Because of your identity as those baptized into new life in Christ, senior adults, members and non-members alike, enjoyed the opportunities for gatherings, for outings, and for services that otherwise would have been unavailable to them because of your identity as those who have been baptized into new life in Christ. People who benefit from mountaintop, SOS, and Habitat for Humanity continue to have safe and sound housing that otherwise would be out of their reach because of your identity as those baptized into new life in Christ. Music every Sunday gives glory to God. People attend Sunday school as children and youth and their parents find support for their identity in Christ and our elders find a place to gather to support one another, to continue to learn and discover new ways to enjoy their retirement. All this and more because of your identity as those who have been baptized into new life in Christ. Sometimes we can get separated from that life. Sometimes we can seek food that doesn't satisfy. We can speak words that do not help. We can forget whose image we have and whose likeness we are created in. The word of God from the good news according to Mark comes to us if we're willing to listen though. You are my beloved child. In you I am well pleased. Those words are for you as you have been baptized into a new identity in Christ. Those words are directed for your well-being. When you come forward to receive the sacrament of communion, you'll pass by the baptismal font. You're invited to touch the water, to feel it, to put it on the back of your hand if you wish, to look and see your reflection, to see God's beloved. It's not magic, you know that. But God chooses to use the things of this world, bread and wine, word and water, for our well-being. So touch the water, remember your baptism, give thanks, and then go from here to show the world what that new life looks like. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.